Welcome to Talking Art Encyclopedia. Subscribe now and let's start the conversation. Good evening. Tonight, we go after the story of an extraordinary personality. He is Salvador Dali, the great surrealist painter who sees the world through surrealist eyes. If you're curious to hear Salvador Dali talk about decadence, death, and immortality, about his surrealist art, his politics, and his existence before he was born, we'll go after those stories in just a moment. My name is Mike Wallace. The cigarette is Parliament. We'll talk with Salvador Dali in just a moment. I think you'll welcome the change to recessed smoking because now Parliament with the recessed filter is best. The new hi-fi Parliament. And here's why. First, Parliament is best because only Parliament can give you over 30,000 traps. No other popular cigarette delivers less nicotine and tar. Second, unlike ordinary filters, Parliament's filter is recessed, set deep down inside here, so that trapped nicotine and tar can't get on your lips. And third, because it's recessed, there's no bitter taste of trapped nicotine and tar to spoil Parliament's pure tobacco flavor. It's a clean, satisfying smoke. And remember, Parliament is continuously tested and reported by the United States Testing Company, one of the world's leading independent testing laboratories. Over 30,000 traps, exclusive recessed filter, flavor pure protection. Yes, smoke the best. High five Parliament, now at popular price. And now to our story. Salvador Dali is a self-confessed genius with an ingenious flair for publicity. An internationally renowned modern artist, he's also designed fur-lined bathtubs, he's lectured with his head enclosed in a diving helmet, and he claims that at the basis of his ideas are, as he puts it, cauliflowers and rhinoceros horns. He paints like this. Here you see perhaps his most famous work. It's called Persistence of Memory. In contrast to this dreamlike picture, here is Dali's surrealistic commentary on the horrors of war. It's called The Face of War. And now an example of Dali's latest phase, the crucifixion showing his current preoccupation with religious subjects. Now let's try to find out some more about the enigma of Salvador Dali. Dali, first of all, let me ask you this. You're a remarkable painter, and you've dedicated your life to art. In view of this, why do you behave the way that you do? For instance, you have been known to drive in a car filled to the roof with uh, cauliflowers. You lectured, as I mentioned once, with your head enclosed in a diving helmet and you almost suffocated. You issue bizarre statements about your love for rhinoceros horns and so on. You're a dedicated artist. Why do you, or why must you, do these things? Because uh, this tying of the eccentricity uh, corresponds to the more important and the more tragical part of my life. The more important and the more tragical part, I don't understand. The more philosophical. Well, what is philosophical about driving in a car full of cauliflowers or lecturing inside? Because they discovered they make one tremendous speech with almost pseudo scientific in the Sorbonne in Paris about my discovering of the logarithmic curve of cauliflowers. The what? Logarithmic aspirant. Oh, yeah. this law. the logarithmic curve, yes. And in the same time, the logarithmic aspiral in the horn of rhinoceros. In this time, discover this is the symbol of chastity, one of the most powerful symbols of modern time. Chastity is one of the most powerful symbols of modern times? In my opinion, is the more urgent and the more dramatic. Because uh, the chastity represents the force of spirit. Uh, and lecture is the reason that the priest is just in any religion, you know? Mm -hmm. Because of the promiscuity, the people make love, is no more spiritual strength, no more spiritual mm -hmm. thought. Yes. Well, well, we will get to your spirituality, your increasing spirituality over the years in just a moment, about lecturing with your head enclosed in a diving helmet. Why? Why? Because uh, in this moment, like, uh, the audience understand that uh, Dali penetrated in the bottom of subconscious mind, 
What's that? Penetrate. Penetrate. In the bottom of subconscious mean in the sea. In the inside of the sea. Yes, a down in the, in the profondeur of subconscious. In the depth of the subconscious. Exactly. Yes. Well, this is one very clear symbol uh-huh. for arrive in this stage of... We try to understand, in all seriousness, we try to understand you and you try to explain. But earlier this week you told our reporter, I like to be a clown, a buffoon. I like to spread complete confusion. Before we went on the air, you said to me, ask embarrassing questions. Ask embarrassing and questions. The more Why? Because, why? Because uh, uh, suddenly make one movie in fouls. Yeah. Uh, in this movie, myself danced Charleston. And my friends looked this piece of movie at all. And Dali in this part is much better than Charlie Chaplin. For me, it's very interesting. Well, are you a Because have... since uh, Dali is one marvelous painter, uh, in the same time, is one marvelous human, it's thousand times much more interesting for everybody. You want to be a marvelous clown as well as a marvelous painter? Uh, it's possible. The two together is very good, you know? Okay. Charlie Chaplin is one genial clown, but never painted the same as Dali. Or see Dali. So uh, what they want to do the is... The same with Charlie Chaplin, eh, in the same time, paying masterpieces, or Dali is thousand times much more important than Charlie Chaplin. Well, now wait, wait. Despite your hijinks, time and again you have called yourself a genius, and you're very serious about this. Now you want to be evidently, you, you want to be a genius in two fields. First of all, you have called yourself a genius. In yeah? many different fields, you know. You? Yes. What else besides an artist? Uh, the more important in uh, my life, more the clown, more the okay. painting, more the my draftsmanship is my personality. Draftsmanship? My personality oh, is more important than every of these little facets of, of my activity. In other words, what is most important to you? Is my personality. It is expressing Dali. Dali. Not the painting, not the clowning, nothing but... The painting, the clowning, the showmanship, the technique, everything is only one manner for express the total personality of Dali. I see. I see. Let's take a look at one of your major paintings, Dali. It's called Sleep. There it is now on the monitor. What's the point of this picture? Is there any point? This is very important because uh, my cell bark constantly in the moment of sleep. Every of my best ideas coming through my dreams in the mere Dalinian activity consists in this moment of sleep. In other words, you conceive a good deal of your... The more important things happen in the moment of Myself I was going to ask if there was any major theme, any powerful idea which inspires all your work. Could you tell us what it was? Evidently, what it is, is simply an expression of Dali, period. There is nothing more in it, or am I wrong? Uh, no, of Dali, of cosmogony of Dali. The what? The cosmogony. Cosmogony? Cosmogony of Dali. What is the cosmogony? What does that mean? This uh, is in advance of new nuclear physics, because every of my paintings Everybody la in the moment of look for the first time, but almost after 12 years, every scientific people recognize that every of these paintings is one real prophecy. In the moment of paying my soul watches, this the more rigid object for everybody, and myself paint these watches, the same very soft camembert. Everybody la. The last development of nuclear physics proved that the new conception of space-time is completely flexible. Not only this, in the microphysics, the time works in reverse. This proved that this object of completely surrealistic approach of so much is completely true and scientific. Dali, I must confess, you lost me about halfway through, and I'm not sure for, I'm not sure that we can... Let me try it another way. What, what does a painter, what does any painter contribute to the world and to his fellow men? Any painter, not just Dolly. What does a painter contribute? 
Every painter paints the cosmogony of himself. Of himself. And it's as simple as that. In fact, which contains Raphael paints the cosmogony of Raphael. Uh -huh. uh, Raphael is the Renaissance period. Yes. Dali paints the atomic age and the Freudian age. Nuclear things uh -huh. and, and psychoanalytic things. Which contemporary painters, if any, do you admire? Uh, first Dali, uh, after Dali, Picasso, oui. the after this, the other. But these, Dali and Picasso, were the only two that really, the two, the two really the excite you. Genius of modern times. The two geniuses of modern times are Dali and Picasso. Uh, in your autobiography, you wrote this. You said, I adore three things, weakness, old age, and luxury. Why? Because the luxury is a product of monarchy. In myself, every day becoming more monarchic. Not in political way, because never is Bali is interested in, politi in politics, but in philosophical and cosmological way, yes. All right. Because uh, in the modern science, the new discoveries of uh, chromosomes and uh, physics and biology, everything proves that the monarchy is the more luxurious things in the life. The most luxurious, all right. Now, old age. And the most perfect. And the, the most, most perfect. 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 And old age, why do you adore old age? Because uh, I believe that the young people is completely stupid, you know? Young people are stupid. It's only necessary, only believe for some all people the same Leonardo da Vinci or arrive for some uh, <laughs> real achievement. And weakness, why Why do you adore weakness? Because in uh, in the modern physics everything is weak. You know, it's everything, uh, every proton, antiproton, neutron, pin is all. What do you mean? It's rendered of weakness, of nothing. But the, 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 in this moment, the most fantastic thing in physics is the antimatter. Every new physician thought avec, about antimatter. A Dali pain 20 years ago, the first antimatter engine. You write in your biography that death is beautiful. What's beautiful about death? Why is death beautiful? This is one uh, feeling. Everything is erotic. In my opinion, everything it's, what? It's erotic, erotic, it's ugly, immediately so arrive the feeling of death, everything becoming noble and sublime. Oh, in other words, life is erotic and therefore ugly. Death is not erotic, but sublime, therefore beautiful. And beautiful. Ah. You know, your fountains, you, Mickey Ballas, now is you uh, a little uh, good face, a little handsome, yeah. but Incidentally, you becoming dead. Yeah. Everybody take out the uh, uh, chapel. You becoming one fantastic man. Everybody respect you a thousand times much better. You know. Are you making? So uh, make are you, are this by way of a suggestion, sir? Exactly. <laughs> so you will so make one striptease. Uh, you becoming ugly in one second. Oh, I, I, agree. I agree. Tell me this. Uh, what do you think will happen to you when you die? Myself, no believe in my death. You will not die? No, no believe in general in the dead, but in the death of Dali, absolutely no, not. She believed in my death becoming very unfried is almost impossible. You, are, you fear death? Yes. Death, death is fear. beautiful, but you fear death. Exactly. Because Dali is contradictory and paradoxical in any. Well, yes, indeed, Dali is paradoxical and contradictory, but why, why, why this fear of death? What, what do you fear in death, Dali? Because there is no sufficient uh, convenience of uh, my fight in religion. There's no, so in the moment of my self-belief more... You're not sufficiently convinced of your faith exactly. in religion. Well, now, I spoke with you about a year ago, and we talked about religion, and you said that as the years go by, you embrace Roman Catholicism more and more with your mind, but not yet completely with your heart. Excuse me, Paul? Why not? Uh, because uh, perhaps it's my early uh, intellectual trend and formation. But now, every day, is more approach of this real feeling of religion. 
just one month ago is when tremendous operation of appendix, yeah. broken appendix. The after this operation becoming three times more religious than before. How old are you done? Uh, never remember exactly, but 54 or 53 or something. Are you formally involved with your religion? Do you go to church a good deal? Do you pray? Do you... Every day more, but there's no, no sufficiently. You know? Not sufficient. Not sufficient. Have you ever had a supernatural vision? Uh, hallucinatory thing, but no supernatural. No supernatural. No super An article about you, you mentioned your, your, your fear of death. An article about you in Life magazine once said that you're afraid of almost everything from ocean liners to grasshoppers. The article said you won't buy shoes because you don't like to take off your shoes in public, and that when you go out, you carry a little piece of Spanish driftwood, which you keep to ward off evil spells. Yes, because the remind very, very superstitious, but this is, I'm sure, is common of every Spanish people, you know? Spanish people is very superstitious. Do you know anything about politics at all? You say you don't care about them. Do you know anything about them? Do you know, for instance, who uh, the Prime Minister of Great Britain is? Uh, yes, but, but no, no, not, not to care of this, because uh, for me, the important thing is look the philosophical events of every moment. And now is absolutely sure, for instance, that the monarchy is restored in Spain yeah. very shortly. You think that will be? Prince Juan Carlos. Like Franco agree about this restoration, is absolutely convincing that the monarchy coming back in France very shortly after one military, perhaps one de Gaulle period. Or military. Do you know? Do you know who the vice president of the United States is? Can you name? Mr. Nixon. Yeah, yes, but yeah, but what is possible? No, what is possible? Perhaps tomorrow you put this in qu question and and you will answer. What do you enjoy doing most? Do you like to? talk, to paint, to eat, to think. Well, what, what do you like to spend your time doing? Now? My manner of expend my time, I think the more joy, the more delictiful is becoming every day a little more Dali. A little more Dali. Because in the beginning of my life, you remember like it becoming Napoleon? First, no, wanted first, to be first the a cook. cook. First you wanted to be a cook, no, then you wanted to be Napoleon. Cooking woman. One woman cooking. You wanted to be a woman cooking? Exactly. No one man, one woman cooking. Second, like it becoming Napoleon. Napoleon. A later one, like it becoming Dali. And now, uh, every day more Dali. In a moment, I'd like to ask you about an extraordinary power which you claim that you have. You've written that you can remember your thoughts and your feelings before you were born. And I'd like to know what those thoughts and feelings were. And we'll get Salvador Dali's answer in just 60 seconds. That's the Parliament story, Parliament with the recessed filter best. Try Parliament yourself. Now then, Dali, you said that you can remember not only things that happened to you in your infancy, but even your feelings before you were born. What were they? What did you think about? What did you think? Well, I remember very clearly many images. Also, not only in black and white, but in glorious technicolor. Technical. I see. And what specifically? No, what for some of these things? Some phosphor phosphorescent X, luminous X. We told about this vision of Dr. Freud in London. The Freud tell me that it is absolutely true is the origin of intrauterine memories. Probably my position, the our position, the, my pupils is very hurt by my hands. Mm. Depend on my position. Was it well? Uh, what was it like? Was it was it pleasant before you were born? Ah, uh, it's completely paradise. Yeah. Paradise. The best moment, the more divine images, in the moment of born, is the moment of the paradise is lost. These are the theory of Otto Rank. Well, under those circumstances, I find it difficult to understand your fear of death. If the moment of being born was paradise lost, perhaps death for you will be paradise regained. And therefore, I would think that you... This is uh, my hope, but is not absolutely sure. This is the uh, trouble. Mm -hmm. Seeing the death is the 
again, the reconquer of this paradise this is excellent, but it's uh, not true yet. Yeah. Do you uh, do you enjoy yourself as as you live? You like yourself? You think? You say that you are a genius. Certainly, you will have. I enjoy my life. You do every day more. You do every week more, mm. because observe Dali, and my admiration for Dali becoming tremendous. Yes. What what kind of dreams do you have? What are they about, Dali? Every time is very agreeable and creative. The last uh, dreams is about the antimatter angels. Uh, perhaps for five months, all the dream about archangels, angels, kings, and the most beautiful spectacle. Oh. You seem to be a mild-mannered man, are you? Please don't understand. But are, you, are you a mild man? Are you a pleasant man to deal with? Uh, are you a friendly man? You seem to be a mild man. An easy man. Everybody loves Dali very much. Everybody loves Dali. But they think uh, no. But your paintings, they're frequently violent. And you've written that in your private life, you have had Im sudden impulses to injure people. As a child, you kicked people. You threw a friend off a rocky ledge. As an adult, you confess that you once kicked a legless beggar along the street. Exactly. But uh, this is my adolescence period. Now becoming much more... Uh, uh, quite in this kind of sadistic things. Yeah. It is the contrary. And yeah. after my religious feeling becoming more strong, yeah. these sadistic things of my adolescence disappeared almost completely. Is that so? And, and when you were a young man too, you used to try to hurt. You were masochistic as well as sadistic. You used to try to hurt yourself. You'd bind your head until That's it hurt because you felt that you could be more creative that way. You do not need that. No, now every of these disappear because every of my libido now is sublimated in the religion and the mysticism. Now, well, there's one story about yourself I'd like to ask you about before you go. When you were courting your wife, Gala, you did an unusual thing. As you've described it, you smeared your body with your own blood from a cut. You tore your clothes, and then you rubbed a jar of evil-smelling fish glue all over yourself, and you plan to present yourself this way in front of your future wife. Why did you do that? Because in this moment, uh, we live could this, in this moment, Bali is true, is almost crazy. Before met Gala, my, uh, my brain is very close to one psychopathologic brain. Your brain, yeah. And in this moment, like it, seduct Gala, in the most terrific manner. He believed that the smell is the more attractive uh, manner for Seduk Gala. Uh, Gala becoming in love with me, it is, is probably the real Gerisho. Mm. Gala uh, created the real mysticism and the real classicism of my actual life. And you have been married now to Gala for how many years? Or perhaps uh, 20 or more, I see. And but since they're still in love with other ways, they love more in the beginning. The other is something that nobody believes. Perhaps it's uh, Dali never make love avec one other woman to Gala. In 20 years. And the people never believe because we, we, everybody goes, why? 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 why shouldn't we believe? It's the most sensible thing. You yeah, but there's no, uh, my self belief is very frequent, but the other people don't think it's very exceptional. Well, I don't think perhaps as exceptional. And now, my obsession is the chastity, because relief the chastity is the more powerful thing for the moon. Mm -hmm. Dali, I certainly thank you for coming and spending this time. I'm looking forward to the publication of your new book, Dali, which will be published in the fall, and I understand we'll have a good many color plates of your paintings in it. Thank you, Doc. Miss you. To those who raise eyebrows or look down their noses at him, Salvador Dali bristles his remarkable mustache with equal disdain. As he puts it, I cannot understand why human beings should be so little individualized, why they should behave with such great collective uniformity. He says, I do not understand why when I ask for a grilled lobster in a restaurant, I'm never served a cooked telephone. 
I'll be back in a moment with a special announcement about future plans. One pack. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.